again. I got a request the other day from somebody wanting to know how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a Z-shaped beam. Well, in order to do that, you need to know how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a parallelogram, since that's the middle of the Z-shaped beam. So in this video, let's talk about the parallelogram. The next one, I'll show you how to handle the Z-shaped cross-section, okay? So here's what a parallelogram looks like. It's basically just a square that's been sheared over like that. And we all know, or if you don't know, go back and look it up. The area moment of inertia of a square is 1 12th B times H cubed. 1 12th the base times the height cubed. And I'm going to show you here how the area moment of inertia of a parallelogram is also 1 12th B H cubed. And I'm going to show you two or three different ways to do this. So let's start with this. Let's, let's try method one here. And this is just, this is almost a, a, a more of a geometric than a mathematical argument, okay? Let's take this parallelogram and divide it up into three pieces. Because remember, when you have a complicated cross-section, what we know how to do is to break it up into a bunch of little simpler shapes and add all the effects of those up. So we can do this, all right? And I'm going to call that part one, that part two, and that part three, okay? And I'm going to draw those separately here. So there's part two, part three, and I kind of got that angle a little off, but you get the idea there, okay? And so I'm going to call this B1 and that B2. I should call that B2 and B3, shouldn't I? B2 and B3, all right? And H doesn't change, okay? Well, as long as I don't change the heights, as long as I keep them all in line with each other like they are now, I can swap their order without changing the area moment of inertia. Because if you remember the parallel axis theorem, um, you only start getting additional terms when you start changing heights. And I'll show you here in a minute what, what we're talking about doing. But if I take that, I can also draw it this way if I like. Oops. I'm having a tough time drawing straight, straight lines today. Okay, let's do this. So that's now one, that's two, and that's three. Okay? It's a terrible two. Let's try that again. Okay, one, two, three. So this is B3, and that's B2, okay? And B2 and B3 equal B total. So from there, I is 1, 12, B2 plus B3, H cubed, okay? And so since those equal B, that's 1, 12, B, H cubed. All right, so there it is. There's kind of a geometric argument. Now, let's try this one more way. Let's, uh, that was method one. I should have labeled that. All right. Now, let's go to method two. I'm going to keep this drawing, and then I'm going to erase this down here. And I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem to show you how we get the same answer another way. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And I'm going to change that and make that two. Well, I keep saying parallel axis theorem. Maybe we don't know what that is. Let's, let's write the expression up here. Okay. If I have area moment of inertia of a cross section that's made up of smaller boxes or smaller shapes, for each one of those shapes, I'm going to put a term in here like that one in parentheses. Okay. And... There we go, got them all. All right, now parallel axis theorem says that if the, the centroid of each individual shape does not lie on the centroid of the combined shape, then there's this distance d between them, and that d has to be squared and multiplied times the area. That assumes the axes are parallel but not uh, collinear, not lined up with each other. Okay, well, let's see, let's start going through this. D. I'm going to need some numbers here. Can I do that? Well, no, I'm going to do this without numbers for right now. Okay, the centroid of the center box is h over 2. And the centroid of the entire shape is also h over 2. Okay, now, the only problem here is the centroid of a triangle is a third of the way in there. So that's h over 3 in that direction, and that's h over 3 as well. 
put the, the centroid in there. So those don't all line up again. Or don't, don't, all, don't all line up anymore when I break it up into pieces. Well, that's okay. Let's just do this. Okay, I1. All right. If you look this up, this is BH cubed over 36. That's the center, the area moment of inertia for a triangle. Okay, about its centroid. That's an important distinction here. Okay, plus, well, let's see, that's BH over 2 is the area. Now, D1. Well, D1 is the distance from H over 2 to H over 3. Well, if I say H over, let's just draw this here, D1 equals H over 2 minus H over 3, and that better be H over 6 last I checked. And not only is that D1, that's also D3, D2 now. D, the, center, the distance from the centroid of the overall shape to the distance of the center to the centroid of that square, zero. They're in the same place. So D2 equals zero. So let's do that. Okay. And let's see. So I get to put that in there times, let's see, D1 squared is it's 1 over 6 squared, or I'm sorry, H over 6 squared. So it's H squared over 36 plus. B, H, and I better make sure I label these. Got to make sure I label these. There's a 1, 1, okay, that's good. Uh, B, H cubed over 12 plus, okay, and that's H2 right there. Got to make this is, this is as much a bookkeeping exercise as it is anything else right now. Now notice this term and this term were exactly the same. I'm going to cheat here. Rather than do that, there. Okay, even though one of the triangles is upside down and the sign of D might have changed, I'm squaring them, so I don't really get to need to care what the, the, the sign is there. Now, let's see, how am I going to do this? So that's BH cubed over 36 plus 1 half BH cubed over 36. What I'm doing here is I'm keeping that half out separate. So, do that times 2 plus B2. These are all 1's over here, by the way, cubed over 12. All right, now if I do this right, I'm going to get this, the expression um, b1 plus b2, the quantity, times h, h uh, cubed over 12. Let's see if that works out that way. So let's see, I'm going to get 3 over 2 b1 h cubed over 36. I'm going to add all those up, and then I'm going to get a 2 in front. Okay, well that's easy. Plus b2 h cubed over 12. Almost there. You can tell where this is headed. We'll divide out by that and I get 12 and I get b1 h cubed over 12 plus b2 h cubed over 12 and that's going to equal i and that is, okay, so that, this is what I said I wanted. Bring it on home here. All I have to do now is pull out the b1 b2 Okay, so there you go. And that equals B. So V did it two ways now. Use the parallel axis there and went through all the math. And to start out, I just went through sort of a geometric argument of rearranging triangles. They're both valid and they both show that the area moment of inertia of a parallelogram is BH cubed, I'm sorry, yeah, BH cubed over 12, where B is the base, H is the height. Hope this helps. Next video is on how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a Z-shaped beam.